this exercise is about the continuous random variables. So let's look at the first one. So, okay, so all of you guys will be transferring to a partner university later on. But let's imagine that we have this fictional Kingsland University, which, uh, which is a play on UQ, I think, for in this question. And, it, and this university requires the TOEFL score of at least 520 to complete the transfer. So we know that the TOEFL scores of the IUP students or the KKI students follow a normal distribution with an average of 50 and a standard deviation of 85. So let's go step by step. What do we need to do first? The first thing that we need to do, why is it yellow? So the first thing that we need to do, let's turn that off then. Oops, turn that off then. So the first thing that we need to do is to um, define our random variable. So X, for example, is the TOEFL scores of Facilcom, Facilcom IUP students. So I know that um, this uh, that this is our random variable. Next, what else do we know? I also know that X follows a normal distribution with a mean of 470 and a variance, not a standard deviation of standard deviation of uh, 85 squared. I know that much. Next, what is it that I'm computing? So uh, what is the probability? So let's see. What is the probability that A, any A assume, oh, we need to assume, right? So A is just any IUP student. So what is the probability that A obtains a TOEFL score that can be used to transfer to Kingsland University. So we need to check, we need to try to extract what's implicitly, what's implied here. So what's the probability that the X score of A, so the TOEFL score of A will be larger than 520? Because I know that uh, what I'm trying to compute is that the, the what's the probability that A has an X or a TOEFL score, X is has a value larger than 520 because it has to be that much to transfer to KU. So you can then continue on by trying to, um, trying to change it or convert it to a standard variable, right? So I could do X minus 470, divided by, oops, 85, larger than, this is 520, 520, and so forth. And you can then end up with, this is already your Z, and this is 520 divided by minus 470, 50, 50 over 85, 50 over 85 is, you guys can do that on your own. So this is 50 over 85. And then from here, since you're already, you've already standardized this question, oops, so you've already standardized this variable, then you can continue on. You can look up your, uh, look, look up the Z score table and you can solve this problem. So here, not finished yet. You can try on your own time. Oops. Okay, pause. Um, uh, like the reverse lookup, you can also use some um, online uh, Z alpha calculators. That is fine. Uh, once again, I know that this technology is available to you, so you can find it for sure. So basically, you need to find that um, ZA. So you need to find the critical point. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Basically, what is asked of you is 0 0.05. So this is what's being asked of you. There are various methods to do so. You can use calculators, you can compute it yourself, or whatever. Okay. 
So these first two questions were obviously normal, normally distributed. This one is not. Let's look at it. Oh, no. So in the number three, so we have Marco Polo. He's doing some exploring. And he stops to sleep in the desert which, uh, in, with his camel, which is very noisy. The camel bellows out or screams out 20 times a day. And Marco wants to get a good stretch of eight hours of sleep. What is the probability that Marco can sleep for eight hours between, without being woken up by the camel? So notice here what information is given to us. We have a rate. Oh, I have a camel bellowing. I have a camel bellowing that occurs 20 times per day. Okay, 20 times per day. So uh, I know that is the information I know. And what is it that I'm getting, uh, that I'm trying to compute? I'm trying to compute the time between every occurrence of this camel bellowing. In other words, I need to compute X or T, time between camel bellowing, the camel bellowing, between the camel bellowing. And I know that this T follows, oops, no, I don't need to do that, sorry. I know that this T follows a exponential distribution of this lambda 20 times a day. Next, what I want to compute is what's the probability that Marco can sleep for eight hours without being woken up? That means what's the probability that the time between bellowing is at least eight hours? Careful here that our rate is in the units of days, while the problem here is hours, assuming one day is 24 hours. That means in uh, eight hours is one a third of a day. So if I want to compute, what is the probability that T will be larger than one third? Yeah. What's the probability that time elapsed between one bellow and another will be at least or longer than eight hours or one third of a day, then I can use the exponential distribution. Once again, I'll leave that to you. You can look up the exponential equation to compute that. Note that what you are given here is larger than, not less than. So likely you will need to compute one minus P X less than one third, most likely, oops. Most likely you would need to compute that and so on and so forth. I'll leave the rest to you. And finally, our last problem is also a continuation of the Marco Polo and his camel. We know that Marco is walking south and we know that the cities uh, in the southern direction are distributed exponentially. Oh, it's given to you now. And he will usually find one city every 100 kilometer. What is the probability that he travels 50 kilometers without finding a new city? Okay, careful. Now it says it says one city every 100 kilometers, not how many cities for every kilometers. So basically what is being given here is that, oh, Marco expects the mean, the usual, the average is that he will find, uh, oops, I have to define the random variable first, sorry. Distance between cities, because it's exponential, right? It's the cities in the southern directions are distributed exponentially. So I know that this is x exponential, but I don't know the lambda yet. However, I do know that the cities in the southern direction, and he will usually find one city every 100 kilometers. So my expectation, my expectation is that I will find the distance of between cities 
is 100. That's my expectation. Because uh, every 100 kilometers, I expect to find another city. If you go look at the slide in which I have compiled all of the important information about the exponential random variable, you will know that the exponential random variable has an ex oops, has a, an expectation of ooh, sorry has an expectation of one over lambda. And thus, from this equation, you can then deduce the lambda itself will be 1 over 100. So one city for every 100 kilometers. Careful with the wording. And thus, I know that this one here will have a distribution, oh, sorry, the parameter 100. So what is being asked of you? What is the probability he travels 500 kilometers without finding a new city? What's the probability that the distance between cities is larger than 500? So what's the probability that this distance is larger than 500? So there you go. I'm going to leave that to you for the reminder once again. Note here that it's larger than, that means you will likely need to do one minus, and you can finish this on your own time. Oops. I will, at the end of the week, upload the full key, the full um, answer for this exercise, but I will not release it yet uh, to give you guys a chance if you want to try it and challenge yourself. Okay, exactly 15 minutes.